evening, hundreds of prisoners were released early from jails across England and Wales today in an attempt to deal with overcrowding. The probation union said the release included sexual offenders and domestic abusers against government guidance. And there are fears that not all victims have been notified. Our deputy political editor Anushka Astana reports. Out they came, in Leeds, Wellingborough, Leicestershire, and in Wandsworth, where they cracked open the champagne. <laughs> Celebrating as 1,700 prisoners were let out of jail early, walking free 40% of the way through their sentences instead of 50 to ease chronic overcrowding. But is there enough support to prevent re-offending? This father isn't convinced. Only recently people have been released and within a week they're back in prison. So that's my worry for him. Um, he only said to me on the phone yesterday that he'll have to start uh, uh, stealing again if his benefits can't be uh, sorted out as soon as he gets out of prison. After picking up his son, Andrew Lindley told us he felt the process was a shambles without accommodation organised or a meeting with a benefits advisor. In Parliament, Labour's Justice Secretary blamed the opposition. If we had not done this, we faced courts unable to hold trials, police unable to make arrests, and a total breakdown of law and order. Shabana Mahmood said the government had excluded sexual offences, serious violence and terror. The government had also promised to exclude domestic abuse-connected crimes, but at Wrexham, one man admitted he pleaded guilty to a domestic charge. He described the conditions inside. I reckon it's going to go into a riot soon because it's that, that bad in there, so... Um, just people fighting every day. On Friday, there were a record 88,521 people in prison in England and Wales. That followed the number of spaces in men's prisons falling to just 100 after the August bank holiday weekend. Which explains this policy, but it is deeply painful for some victims. Just like another kick in the teeth from a system that hasn't done enough to protect me all along. This letter informed Elizabeth Hudson that her ex-husband, who was jailed for six years after assaulting and threatening to kill her, could now be out in less than two. I was angry, um, sobbed, um, all the old feelings are back. The government said every released prisoner would be under licence, meeting a probation officer with accommodation offered if needed, including the possible use of budget hotels. Manoush Grastana, ITV News. Sinclair Starmer has won the Commons vote over the controversial cut to winter fuel payments for millions, millions of pensioners. In the end, only one Labour MP actually rebelled, but 52 others decided not to vote. Well, our political editor Robert Peston is in the House of Commons. So, Robert, victory then for the Prime Minister. But it's not over, is it? Well, a painful victory in the sense that the vast majority of Labour MPs wish that Keir Starmer hadn't done this. I'm reminded that during the general election campaign only weeks ago, at no point did Keir Starmer say that his first action as Prime Minister that would directly affect people's living standards would be to take up to £300 away from millions of pensioners, many of them on low incomes. They are means testing now the eligibility for the winter fuel payment. It'll only go to people with pension credit. And as you say, you know, Labour, well, only one Labour MP voted against. Probably a dozen of those people who have stayed really did it to show how angry they are. But don't forget, there are another seven Labour MPs who were expelled only recently for doing something similar. And Keir Starmer has done that. You know, impressive thing is he united the entire opposition against this policy. Keir Starmer says he has to do this because the Tories, he says, left the books in such a parlous state. And he also warns there are going to be more painful decisions to come. Robert Peston in the comments. Thank you. The family of Steve Diamond say the only good thing to have come out of the inquest into his death was that the Jeremy Kyle show was cancelled. A coroner found that there was insufficient evidence to suggest Mr Diamond's treatment on the ITV programme had led directly to his suicide. Well, Ellie Pitt is at Winchester Coroner's Court. Uh, Ellie then explained, what did the coroner actually say? Well, Mary, the coroner concluded that Steve Diamond took his own life after experiencing mental distress. Mr Diamond 
appeared on the Jeremy Cowell show in May 2019 to take a lie detector test after his partner Jane Callahan accused him of cheating. The inquest was played footage that showed Mr Diamond visibly distressed after being told he had failed that test. But the coroner ruled today there is an absence of reliable evidence that his time on the show contributed to his death. ITV has said today it believes it sets the industry standards for the selection, protection and support of those who take part in its shows. But Mr Diamond's son, Carl Woolley, said earlier that Jeremy Carl had spoken to his dad in the most brutal way. The coroner ruled that Mr Diamond was aware of Mr Carl's presenting style, though, which could be critical of guests, and said there is an insufficient evidence the presenter's treatment contributed to Mr Diamond's mental state. While responding to those comments from the coroner, Jeremy Carl said today his name has finally been cleared. The Jeremy Carl show was axed. 14 years after being on air following Mr Diamond's suicide. His son said today that the only good thing that came of my father's death is Jeremy Kyle is cancelled, is Jeremy Kyle's show is cancelled. Ellie Pitt and Winchester, thank you. The King will fly to Australia and Samoa for his biggest overseas tour since his cancer diagnosis. Button Palace confirmed that Charles Nkwele will join world leaders at a Commonwealth summit for nine days next month. And finally, Prince William has carried out his first engagement since it was announced that the Princess of Wales will return to public duties. The Prince was greeted by applause from children at a school in Tlenecli in South Wales before visiting the Wales Air Ambulance headquarters. He also presented caps to former women's rugby players. It comes one day after Kensington Palace confirmed that Kate, the Princess of Wales, has completed her chemotherapy treatment. And that's all for now. Short programme today. The weather's next. Then it's football. England versus Finland live in the Nations League. Bye-bye.